One IP series that I wanted to review for a long time now is the Luminos lineup from Celestron. I read a lot of good things about these eyepieces. They are supposed to have a very good build and optics quality, which should translate in a great viewing experience. Well, hit that like button and subscribe, and let's see together if this really is the case. Celestron is a popular US-based company when it comes to astronomy equipment. They sell telescopes, eyepieces and all sorts of accessories. The company was originally founded in 1955 by Tom Johnson in Torrance, California under the company name Valor Electronics. And after a rather interesting history and a few ownership changes, Celestron ended up partnering with Sinta Technology Corporation of Taiwan in 2005. You may have heard about Sinta before. That is because they are the parent company and manufacturer for Skywatcher and Orion products as well. All this means that the product manufacturing is done by Sinta and the equipment then gets sold under the name Celestron across the world. Celestron products are known for their decent quality and affordable price. Their entry-level IP series is called XL. And if you are interested, you can check out my full review of the 7mm XL. I leave a link in the description below. Celestron also has a premium eyepiece lineup, the Lumino series, which consists of six eyepieces and a 2-inch 2.5x bellow lens. The eyepieces have focal lengths starting from 7mm and going all the way up to 31mm for the biggest one. The apparent field of view is not only constant for all eyepieces, but with its 82 degrees also very wide, promising an immersive viewing experience. In today's video, we are going to take a deeper look at the 31mm version. I've been using this eyepiece for almost two weeks now, and thanks to some great seeing conditions, I had the chance to thoroughly test it on multiple nights. I used it in combination with my 12-inch product from Omegon, and the testing was done from a Bottle 4 location. Right from the moment where I got the box and started to unpack it, it was clear that this is the premium lineup from Celestron. The box has a nice design and a certain quality feel to it. But the thing that struck me the most, even before opening the box, was the size of it. I mean, I knew that this eyepiece would be big, but I somehow didn't expect it to be this big. Opening the box and seeing the eyepiece confirmed my suspicion at this point. This eyepiece is big, and with that I mean it's huge. It's also heavy, coming in at 1.1 kilograms or 2.5 pounds. This makes it one of the heavier eyepieces I've used so far. The weight and the size might pose a problem for smaller telescopes, so this is definitely something to keep in mind when shopping for one. As the name suggests, this eyepiece has a focal length of 31 mm, while offering a very generous apparent field of view of 82 degrees, making it a good choice for deep sky observations. These specs are obtained by employing an optical system made out of six fully multi-coated lenses. It also comes with a 27 mm long eye relief and a field stop diameter of 47 mm. It features an all aluminum body with a rubber grip and a rubber eye guard. Holding it in hand, it feels like a premium eyepiece, no question about that. Twisting the rubber grip rises the eye guard in a smooth and stepless way. I do enjoy this very much. Especially because it's done in such a way that if I rise the eye guard all the way up, I'm able to press my eye firmly against it without my eye or my eyelashes touching the lens. This offers total protection against stray light coming from nearby street lamps while still allowing me to see as much of the field of view as possible. To me, this is the best implementation for an eye guard I've seen so far. 
in general, the design of this eyepiece is nice and well thought out. So this sounds really good, but how is the actual viewing experience with this eyepiece? Well, it's complicated. Let me explain. The eyepiece offers good levels of brightness. Even dimmer objects were easily visible. The contrast is also pretty good, allowing me to distinguish the object I was looking at from the dark background of space without a problem. The field of view is not only wide, but also sharp. This applies to the center and the outer edges as well. A bit of chromatic aberrations are visible though, and stars become more and more elongated the further they are from the center of the field of view. However, since other similar eyepieces show the same effect as well, it's safe to say that this is due to the telescope's mirror and not because of the eyepiece itself. Also, not using a comma corrector didn't help in this regard. So, the eyepiece is capable of delivering sharp views of the night sky. You just might want to think about getting a comma corrector if you plan on using it in combination with a medium to fast reflector telescope. While the 82 degrees apparent field of view is definitely immersive, it's sadly not that flat. Moving the telescope while looking through the eyepiece creates an effect like looking a bit through a fishbowl. This effect is not that pronounced, but is definitely noticeable. And this brings me to one of the two biggest problems that this eyepiece has. I'm talking about a weird halo visible around the edges of the field of view. I'm not sure what causes this, but it looks like some kind of odd light refraction due to the curved lens. I notice that the brighter the sky is, either due to poor seeing conditions or light pollution, the more visible this effect becomes. It's like the light gets bent around the, the lens and concentrates around the edges. I tried to capture this using my phone and it looks something like this. In reality, this effect is not as pronounced as this picture is showing, but it's definitely there. The second problem I had with this eyepiece is that it has some threshold for the eye relief below which you start to see black spots in the field of view. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the eyepiece has an eye relief of 27 millimeters. If you place your eye at this exact distance from the lens, then you'll get the best view possible. Move your eye further away and you won't be able to see as much of the field of view. Moving closer, however, closer than approximately 15 millimeters, then black spots start to appear covering big areas of the field of view. And the thing is that given the wide apparent field of view, you always have a tendency to move in as close as possible to the lens to be able to see as much as possible of the field of view. It's very strange and I haven't noticed this effect on other eyepieces with similar focal lengths before. All this means that with this eyepiece, it is a bit tricky to find the optimal position for your eye to obtain the best viewing experience. Keeping the right distance uh, to the eyepiece will reward you with bright and contrast-rich views of the night sky. Get in too close and the view will quickly get spoiled. Before we wrap up this review, I also want to give you guys a better understanding of what different objects in the night sky look like when observed with this 31mm Luminos. For this, I've set up some views using Stellarium. Please keep in mind that these are simulated views and not actual views of the night sky. This is only to give you a general idea of what the field of view is like. The 31mm Luminos from Celestron is a good eyepiece that offers a premium build quality, a wide apparent field of view and a long comfortable eye relief. 
The overall viewing experience is however only average, which is a bit of a letdown. The eyepiece is good, don't get me wrong, but it's not premium good, like the writings on the box suggests. It also costs 400 euros here in Germany, and honestly, for this price, I don't think it's worth it. In the US, the price is around 330 US dollars, which is definitely more appropriate. All I'm saying is that before you go ahead and purchase this eyepiece, you might want to consider other options uh, in this price range as well, like the 30mm 82 degrees from Explore Scientific or the 30mm Swan eyepiece from Omegon. In my next video, I'll be comparing the 31mm Luminos to the 30mm Swan from Omegon to see which one offers the better viewing experience for deep sky observations. So make sure to check out that video uh, when it gets published. All right. So these are my opinions about the 31mm Luminos and now I'm curious to see what you guys think about this eyepiece. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Also, let me know if there is any other eyepiece you want me to review next and I'll see if I can get my hands on it. Alright? Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.